Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody, it's the Ramble. That's what it says in white letters and red letters. It says Alex, and that's me until midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to do this for a while. And uh, we're doing it in the best way possible. We're doing it resuming uh, this guy over here. Wait a minute, I got a point the right way. Oh, no. I'm right here. That's Will Durst, and Will Will uh, j j just beat my chops about what what font I was going to use uh, for his name, and he wanted me to use Georgia. So there there's Will Durst's name using. Oh, why did you to use Courier? Well, Courier is like uh, as a is my least favorite font because it looks like you're writing with a typewriter. Yeah. That's the point. Well. Maybe next time we'll use Courier. Okay, I'll I'll give you several ones to use, and and you can. And you sound like Woody Allen. You, you can check it out. Anyway, this guy, listen to him. He's busting my chops already, and and he he's had a stroke. Now act, act like a stroke victim, will you, please? Okay. Slur your speech. Let your I'll, left. Uh, I'll uh, droop, raise my. Droop, I'll raise my level. Droop your left eye. You know, do something to make us honestly believe you've had a stroke. People say my left eye is droopy. <laughs> no, it's sneezy or grumpy. Uh, it's not, not droopy. It's not doc. No, it's not droopy. Anyway, uh, hello, Will. How you doing, pal? Hey, Alex Bennett. This is what do you look like after a year in bed? You know. Did you see Rudy Giuliani and his hair dye? Streaming down his face. Yeah, I did absolutely. And the fact is that when they stream, when it, I have used hair dye, okay, it never drips like that. What he was using was he was probably using a spray-on hair thing. No, it's yeah. a home. No, no, I've it, used that home it, stuff. It, it never drips. Oh, really? It doesn't drip. No, I can sweat and everything and won't drip. That was oh, he like was sweating vociferously. Well, there's this stuff they use to uh, hair dye, not hair dye, but it's like a spray, and you spray it on, and it does away with the gray and everything, and it's kind of temporary. It washes out. That's what he probably was using. He was didn't even really go out and have his hair dyed. You know, he was doing. No, it I thought it was a, like a home thing that he did. No, it was a spray thing. Yeah. Pay the money. Get mm -hmm. it done professionally. Yeah, get it You're done professionally. You're mayor of New York. You probably know a couple of hairstylists. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, but anyway. Good one. Let's talk about your stroke. I had a stroke? Do you remember the stroke? <laughs> I remember not being able to get into my car, which was so confusing. What do you mean not being able to get in the car? You were going to a gig. You were going to Mime Troop was holding a benefit. I know because I've heard this story before. The in mime, the Presidio. The Mime Troop was holding a benefit. In the, the Presidio. In the Presidio, uh, in the theater in the Presidio, I guess. Uh, yeah. And um, A renovated uh, theater. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, you, uh, you, you tell, them, tell them what happened. You got out of your car and you went to the... I got out of my car to repark it closer to the stage door. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And when I got back, I couldn't get in. My feet were dancing, they but were, they wouldn't go towards the door. What do you mean they were dancing? They were kind of like you know, left, right, left, right, left, right. But really? Not, not. Yeah, they weren't listening to instructions from the tower. <laughs> they didn't, the, the, weren't listening to the tower. Okay. Uh -oh. So then, so I went into the theater. Mm -hmm. Backstage, because the door was right there. Yeah. And then I tried to sit down, and I couldn't sit down in a chair. I kept missing the chair. Wow. So I did this thing where you slam your back against the wall, and then you slide down. 
Yeah. And I thought that after I slid down, I would hit the chair, but I missed the chair. Oh, so boy. people people thought something was wrong, and everybody came up to me, are you okay? Are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm fine. And another woman said, I don't think you're fine. My mother's a doctor. Hang on. And her mother was in the audience. Wow. Yeah. So it was one of those things, is there a doctor in the audience? And there was. Son of a bitch. You were lucky. I was very lucky. I mean, if there wasn't a doctor, well, they could, probably could have said, is there a doctor in the house? They might have found one. But you were lucky that you knew there was one, and she came in. Yeah, and- the mime troop. So what did you say? Yeah. All, yeah, yeah. all their rich donors, of course, there had to have been a doctor. Yeah, well, you know, if you were losing your speech you could have done some mime and somebody would have understood what you were saying <laughs> um so the san it, francisco so, mime troupe which talks yeah they talk they're not a, really a mime troupe i've never figured that one out no yeah um so anyway it's like the sunset district where you never see the goddamn sunset <laughs> At North Beach, which is on the north side of the city and is nowhere near a beach. That's I lived in North Beach. I was born and raised in North Beach. It's on the east side of the city, I'm sorry. Yeah. And it's nowhere near a nowhere near, nowhere near a beach. beach. Well, you can see a beach. Well, you can't see a beach. You can see piers from there. It should be called East Beachless. <laughs> well then I would hate to have to say that to people. Where were you born? I would have to say East East Beachless. Say what? How yeah, much get... to say North Beach. Anyway, anyway, so so you you, the, the, you get so the, I, the doctor. So I had the stroke or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. I had no idea at the time. Yeah, I just knew something was wrong. Yeah, because uh, my feet were not following directions from the tower. Yeah. Oh wow. And so you knew. So something. then yeah. they called an ambulance. Yeah. And they took me to one hospital. Yeah. And then they had to call another ambulance to take me to a hospital less than a mile away because the first hospital didn't have a neuro- neurological division. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so they get you to the hospital. When do you first realize that the legs aren't working and the arm isn't working? About a week later. Really? You didn't realize it then? I mean, did it, was it still, were they still working? I knew something time? was wrong. Yeah, but I mean, were they still working at that point? Or is it just you didn't try to see if they were working? I didn't try to see if they were working. Yeah, so a week later, you suddenly realize that your left leg and your left arm aren't working. Right. Your hand's working, which is good, because you can still jerk off. Yeah. But there goes... uh, Yeah, with my left hand. Yeah. Uh, Every now and then, you lose will. So it seems like I'm a stranger. Yeah, but anyway, so... Uh, uh, you you real suddenly realize that you don't have the use of those. What, yeah. What was your first thought about that? I mean, it, 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 did panic hit you, or did, did no? They said I had a stroke, and we all know there are all sorts of uh, levels of strokes. Yeah. There are, there are strokes where the person is permanently uh, a vegetable. Yeah. And there are strokes where people get by and the next week they're fine. Yeah. Wow. So I knew that. So I was just hoping it wasn't a formal. So what, what did they, what, what they, it wasn't a mild stroke that, that I'm sure they didn't say, but how did they term it? Well, there's two yeah. kinds. Yeah. There's hemorrhagic strokes. Okay. Which is what I had. We're learning all about strokes here, folks. So here, which this is where a blood vessel bursts yeah. or something. Wow. Which is what happened to me, mm-hmm. and then there's blood clots, and you know, there's all sort, all sorts of things that can happen. In, in to the, the brain. in the in the broad spectrum of strokes, where does yours fit? Not too bad. Not too bad. Well, you it look. Right, it, well, go ahead. It happened on the right side, so that's why it affected the left side of my body. Yeah, because I mean, I'm I'm looking at you. But now. I can still speak and I can still swallow. Yeah. So that was good. But I'm looking at you, you know, and and from the neck up, which is how we normally used to look at you. And you're 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 pretty much you're cognitive. You know, you're sharp. You're fast. You're witty. You're you don't have any speech problems. 
Uh, it, so, so basically, what happened to you was all physical, and that in that way, it's got to be really frustrating because at least if your brain was out or something, you wouldn't know the rest of you had a problem, you know. But you're cognitive and you're you're sharp <laughs> and you're witty and and. Uh, uh, and, and pretty. And pretty. I, I forgot to mention that, ladies. I'm and still gentlemen. pretty. He's yeah. still pretty. Um, occasionally, Will's signal goes out for a second, and we get things says Will's iPad. But don't let that bother you. Uh, but so the leg doesn't work. You see, you got to get the leg going. refuses to rejoin the band. Really? And the arm? A little better. A little better. Okay. All right. <laughs> So do they think that maybe they can they can through therapy get all this stuff going again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's a long haul. It's a real Which long is why haul. I'm going to occupational therapy twice a week. Yeah. And I'm going to uh physical therapy twice a week. Yeah. And 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 wow. Medicare won't pay for it unless they think you're making progress. Oh, so you now are they paying for it so far? So far, so don't you, tell anybody. Oh, but but they have to they have to say you're making progress because they won't pay for it if you're not because they don't figure it's going to work, right? Yeah, why beat a dead horse? Yeah, yeah. But is yours working to any even limited extent so far? Oh yeah. Oh okay. I'm not a dead horse. Good, and then we don't have to beat you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because you don't want to beat a dead horse. Thank you. I'll be here all week. That's the comedian. That's the comedian over there. Anyway, um, uh, so, I mean, you, you, the frustration you must be having is, to begin with, you always said that more than being a stand-up comic, you considered yourself a writer. All right? Yeah. And, and I'm a writer yeah. who performs. You're a writer who performs. And and so, therefore, you can't even write right now because you gotta you, you got to have both hands to do that, right? You're not going to hunt and peck it with your left right, hand. Right, I can't. I already tried. Really? Yeah, it doesn't work. I mean, do you send emails to people through your iPad, or are you just doing, yeah. gave up on it? You you can talk into the the iPad has. If you look at the bottom of the thing where you're sending the letter, there's a there's a little uh, or the email. There's a little uh, microphone, and I use that all the time. I I'm tired of typing. If I can, uh, anybody, for instance, sends me. If you sent me a uh, a text message. I would text you back by talking into the computer, you know. So are you seventy one? Me what? Because your hat says limited edition nineteen thirty nine. Yeah, that makes me uh, that makes me eighty. Oh my god! Yeah, I was born in nineteen thirty nine. Oh I god. see. I see. The stroke did away with your math skills. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, which is good. Uh, you know, I, I, if I had a stroke, if, I don't know. If I had a stroke, what would I want to have? What when's like when's your birthday? Day? Huh? When's your birthday? December 18th. I'll be 81 this year. You ready for that one? Holy shit. I know. I know. And everything's going. But I don't want to complain to you because you pretty well beat me to everything's going. Yeah, I'm the king of <laughs> You're the king. Of, right you're the king of everything's going. No, I mean I got neuropathy in my leg, and I've got. Um, oh, I had the prostate cancer, you know. But that, oh yeah, you had the cancer. Yeah, I had the cancer. You know, I, I somebody just said to me, "Now you can call yourself a cancer survivor," and I go, "What?" <laughs> you know, what I had was prostate cancer at 80, which is like a no-brainer. All right. You live long enough, probably you're going to get prostate cancer. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I said the good news is, the bad news is I've got prostate <coughs> cancer. The good news is I've made it to 80. So, you know, I mean. Yeah, I had a stroke. The next thing I have is a broken hip. A broken hip? Yeah, well. Let's... And then I, w I walk outside the house and uh, I go to the, sto to go to the store and then I forget where I live. <laughs> and I have, then I have to call Debbie to come and get me. Yeah, right. Well, none of that's you. You have lost no cognitive ability at all. I mean, from the neck up, you're Will Durst. Except you know, for the shaky camera at home, the camera was in one place. You know. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Do the cats miss you? 
Debbie says they do, but I don't know. I think cats just care about who can open up the can of cat food. Yeah, are you feeding me? Yeah. I'm sure if you came home, they would have be all over you and go, oh, well, so. Especially before I shook the snack box. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, the box that you shake and they come running because yeah. they know you're going to give them snacks. Yeah. Now, people go, well, what's the worst part about having a stroke? And my question would be, since I'm not, I'm not everybody else, what is the best part about having a stroke? Best part about having a stroke? Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's uh, sleeping all day long. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite hobbies. Yeah. What else? They come and they come and they, oh, they change your diaper and have to take your shit away and your pee away. Yeah. People change your diaper. Yeah. And that's... you can shit, you can shit in your bed. Really? And well, then they get in your diaper. And you don't have to, number one, you don't have to feel guilty about it. No. And number two, uh, somebody else has to, to clean it up. You have to stop doing it when you go home, though. Oh, really? Why? Because your wife disagrees with uh, <laughs> the whole attitude. <laughs> <laughs> you telling her, you know, I'm going to continue shitting in my bed when I go home. Yeah. And I, I think I would have to marry one of my Filipino overlords in order for that to happen. Now you have, I saw your, um, your uh, nurse. Or very, what is that? Very is that, attractive, yeah. Is that a nurse? Called care, caregivers. Oh, the caregiver. Okay, you're in what hospital again? You're in... Not a hospital. It's a, uh, yeah, what is it? It's like a rehab house. Yeah. It's uh, a boarding we, care house. We, go, so they, we, we lost your pic, we lost your picture yeah, again. So yeah, you did. Yeah, there you go. There. Do you know why? Did you touch? So they feed me. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, anyway. So they feed me three meals a day, mm -hmm. and they give me my medications, and so yeah. there's a certain amount of care involved. And they, the one you showed me, the one that I talked to when she came very, in the room, very pretty. Very. Diva. Well, I, I you can't tell who's pretty and who isn't pretty anymore because they're all wearing masks, you know. But from the nose up, she was pretty yeah. cool. She pretty. Very attractive and very funny. Very funny. I asked her if, how, what kind of a patient you were, and she said something like horrible. Uh, yeah. You know, she, I, I said, he, is he being good? And she says, most of the time. Yeah, they have no sense of humor. None. Really? I mean, yeah. I, I can't imagine that you were a difficult patient. You know, I mean, the, are you... No, because they're, they're the ones who decide whether or not they can bring you a second cup of coffee, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. You, so you be nice to them. So you get that second cup of coffee. Right. Right. And, and, and it is, it's a good cup of coffee, right? No, it's not a bad cup of coffee. I yeah. mean, the last place I was at had bad cups of coffee. Yeah. Uh, oh, really bad coffee? I mean, what kind of coffee really, was it? Really, really bad coffee. What, like what Folgers. It was Folgers. I was going to say Folgers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is Folgers and here they use some sort of good blend. Is Folgers the worst coffee in the world? Yeah. It's the one that we grew up with. Really, I never. You know, I was never a coffee drinker till I went to uh, the KMEL in San Francisco, and then I used to just have a cup of coffee because there was a coffee machine there, and I got into having coffee. Uh, but you're you're a big coffee drinker. You do like two urns a day of it, right? Two pots a day. Two yeah. pots a day. I only do one cup, two cups a day. I do one cup in the morning of a double shot of, of my my favorite coffee, which is get, wake the hell up, uh, Jamaica. Well, when I was in fifth grade, when I was twelve, I was hyperactive, and some there was some study that said if you over amp the kid, yeah that will cure his hyperactivity. So they fed me coffee when I was 12. I just developed a taste for it. Wow. Now you uh, you had, uh, here. here's something that's a little interesting, I think, for the audience to hear. You uh, actually had your there brain, broke, yeah. your brain, uh, brain, uh, brain drilled into. There, it must be uh, the reason. No, we... not my brain. They didn't drill into my brain. They drilled into my skull. 
I see. Move your move your iPad a little bit. I think you, for some reason you lose the signal sometimes, and then we get a thing that says Will's iPad. Yeah. Certain angle, yeah. Yeah, certain angle. Um, uh, but they had to drill holes in your head because you had blood in your cranium, right? Yeah, the burst the burst blood vessel meant there was blood inside my cranium, along with spinal fluid. So they took uh, they drilled a hole in your head. Three holes in my head yeah. to accommodate it, it, a certain device. Or to use you as a bowling ball. Which, yeah, which I akin to a, a carpet sweeper because it took all the liquids out of my head. Yeah. And, and you were, pushed them down another hole, which was created as a drain. Wow. And so yeah. that, 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 and you were awake for all of that, right? Yeah. But what was it Debbie said? You looked like a character out of Dune who had all the wires everywhere. All right. The, the father. Yeah. 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 Kenneth McMillan, I think, played the character. Yeah. But you, you, you had it in your head. Okay. Yeah. And then I had, I had it, uh, the ventilator. Mm -hmm. I had, I had wires in my head and a tube coming out of my head. Then I had the ventilator, and then I had a pick so they could just add IVs to it. Wow. And then, and then I had a couple other things. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember this. I hope there's pictures. Well, let's get this. I don't remember any of this. Well, and, and uh, it'd be nice to see pictures, but not yet. Once you're out of there, then you can laugh at those pictures. Look at me with that hole in my head, you know. But then that, that lasted how long? How long were the, the drainage thing going on? Oh, I don't know. It was that about four weeks? Whoa. I was I was in the ICU yeah. the first time mm -hmm. for first time for about eight days. The second time for about six weeks. Jeez almighty. Oh, uh. And the bill came mm -hmm. and it was one point two million dollars. But Medicare paid most of it. One point two million. Well, they always bill higher than they expect to get because the, the what Medicare probably paid was like thirty seven dollars and fifty cents. Right, yeah. and we had to pay I think twelve hundred bucks. Twelve hundred bucks. That's not bad. I mean, come on, you know, for that one point two million dollars. One point two million dollars. That's pretty good. I my my prostate radiation, the two forms of it, the regular radiation and then the prostate seeds. Came to about one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Is you know, so I mean, yeah, I mean, the, but I think they sent out a bill for more than it is, so they get more than they would get if they give a, gave a lower bill. Okay. Uh, so I, th I think they get a lot of people go what, and then they think, no, oh, no, maybe, no, no, you, maybe there'll be a, a neck, you know, some no, but sort what's of. What's nice uh, is you have bragging rights. You know, and your bragging rights are, hey, I. You know, uh, one point two million dollars. I'm worth one point two million dollars. And, and yeah. by the way, there's probably it's probably more by now because uh, the bill comes every all the time. You know, and what do they do if you can't? Yeah, yeah I haven't been in uh, ICU for three months. Yeah. So right. yeah. But still, you're in that hospital, and that's you know that says something. Just quickly, because we got uh, what do we got here? About two minutes. Uh, anything okay. you want to say about the election? Uh, Donald Trump is a baby. <laughs> a baby Trump, like Baby Yoda. Baby Trump. But we knew that, yeah. Well, you know, they have all those things. Uh, you've seen the baby Trump that they put up, they blow up, and they put out. And the one in Britain, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it, that's that's Trump pretty much to a T. Yeah, it yeah. looks like the pig from uh, from uh, the band Modi Blues. Uh, oh, uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, the floating pig? Yeah. 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 Was that Moody Blues? I don't remember it. No, no, no. It was uh, the other one. Pink Floyd? Pink Floyd, yeah. Pink Floyd. Yeah. I. You can't tell the difference between Pink Floyd and the Moody Blues. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're the same band in my mind. Those were two bands I never cared about. Never cared about. Moody Blues I liked. You liked them? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Pink Floyd I never got into. Yeah. Hey, listen. Not, I even, to... yeah. not even the wall. Yeah. What you would think would be right up my alley. Yeah.
Hey, you take care. Yeah, well, we'll, well I want to talk to you again next week. I want to do, we'll, we'll do right. this on a regular basis because I consider this GabNet therapy, and we're billing it out today at uh, a half a million dollars. So I'll, okay, I'll submit it. Bill Sag after. I'll, 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 I'll send it to... <laughs> I'll send it to uh, to uh, uh, Medicare and and see what no, I get. Sag after send it to Sag after. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like they care. Medicare might pay for it. Yeah, Medi <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Will Durst. We it's so great to talk to you, Will. I'm sure the audience is happy to hear from you too. Good to see you guys. Good to see you too, to Will. See. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, and we will. Oh, let me turn my lights on here. <laughs> I forget to do it. I'm getting to be an old man. I forget to turn on my lights. Uh, anyway, uh, that's Will Durst, and uh, we're going to do some more with Will. Uh, I, I, I think it's good therapy for him, and it's great therapy for me because I get to see an old friend who had an unfortunate circumstance happen to him, uh, it, it's still being, how can I call it? I mean, he's still, his brain is still there. His humor is still there. Uh, it's just part of him doesn't work right now. But, you know, give it time. Give it time. I, I love the man. He did our show here for several years, every, about every three weeks. And um, I, uh, I'm glad that uh, yeah, we've missed him for a year. In fact, I did play some shows with him on it um, uh, in the past, um, if, uh, over the last year or so. So people would remember the humor and the fun that is Will Durst. And it's nice that we now have him back again. So, uh, And he's in the hospital. And uh, I, 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 I was calling him for... Oh, maybe like three weeks, four weeks, more than that, maybe two months, every couple of, every, about once a week. And then we would just talk and talk and talk. And I never brought up him doing one of these recordings with me because I didn't know how he was going to react to that. And finally, I said to him when we were talking, I said, you know, really, we should do one of these things like we used to do when you do from the bed. Would you like to do that? And he immediately, without thinking about it, said, of course which just, you know, made me feel so good, not because I have programming, but because it said something about Will's condition and that he, he still wants to feel vital and he's going to do things that make him vital. And um, I just wish I were in California and I could go out. Well, you can't go out to see him because he's in a, in a you know, in a, 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 rehab, a rehab facility, I don't know, a nursing home. And uh, they don't let people in. They don't even let Debbie, his wife, in. She has to stand outside that window. Uh, I don't know if we showed it in this video, but he showed it to me, this window, and she talks to him and hang, hang, holds up notes and things like that in order to see him. So, uh, you know, uh, we love him. We just love him, and it's great to have him back. Well, we only have one person waiting in our waiting room here to talk to us. And it's uh, Charlie Wallace, and um, what the hell? Hello, Charlie. It's just you and me. Oh, no. I don't know what's happened to all the other people. Well, it's the day before Thanksgiving. It is the day before Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have done a show tonight, you know? Or I should have well, we got some people in the chat room. So. Yeah, we do have some people in the chat room, like Charlie Wallace. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, Megan and Karen. And my own old friend, uh, Karen Babbitt, is out there, too. Uh, she's a comedian that I knew years ago and, and just a very funny and talented woman. And, in fact, in fact a couple of weeks ago, I talked to her for the first time uh, in a long time. And we talked about Will. So tonight, she got a chance to see how Will was doing. She's She's been talking to Debbie from time to time and getting in on the latest haps. Here comes some people. Here comes Josh Wheeler. Here comes uh, 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 Jeff Stein. And, and so that's a, you know, that's a beginning, isn't it? Yeah. That's a, that's a beginning group to make some kind of trouble here tonight. You know? <laughs> uh, but please call me and, 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 and invigorate me because lately I've been doing this show and I get tired. 
And I think it's because I'm just tired of talking about the same crap over and over again. Are, are any of you getting tired of all the... Well, you aren't, Charlie. You love it. <laughs> yeah. You love it. Well, plus, you're in, you're in Texas uh, with that governor who, in and of himself, is a super spreader. Yeah. You know. Uh, but you, you got problems there in, in, in Texas. They got problems in California. The worst state in the union right now, you don't want to go to Wyoming. 50%, oh, 59% of people in Wyoming have COVID. Holy shit. Yeah, well, there are only... There's only about two people I, I was going to say there are only about five people in Wyoming, so it doesn't really matter, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I just, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing situation that's happening everywhere around. Yeah, we're uh, averaging 15,000 cases a day in Texas. Really? What do yeah. we have tonight? I, I just had the latest uh, yesterday was um, we had uh, uh, total hospitalizations, 2,982. Um, out of the te tests reported yesterday, 6,262 or 6.2% were positive. So you had how many? We had 15. Well, we had 20,000 a day. 20,000 today? Cases, positive cases just today. Oh, well, well, we had 6,265. Yeah, you know. Uh, we lost 41 New Yorkers. This is go This is all gone up. This is all not good. Oh. oh, look who's here. Look who's coming here. Oh, my God, after all these years. Karen, oh, wow. as I live and breathe, Karen Babbitt. Are you there, Karen? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Okay. So, yep. Oh, good. We want to make sure we could hear you, too. How you doing, Karen? I'm good. I'm good. It was amazing to see Will. God, that was great. Yeah. You know, it. It when I first, you know, I, uh, I asked Debbie, I said, can I talk to him somehow? And she said, yeah, here's how you get a hold of him. And uh, I got a hold of him and did a, a FaceTime. And... Uh, uh, I did. I I waited a couple about a week because I was kind of apprehensive. I didn't know what to expect, and what I got was really from the neck up. I got the old Will Durst. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and, he's there. Yeah, he's there, and he's uh, he he's doing great. You know, I mean, he's you know he's still got problems. He's he's not walking on one side. Well, he's not walking on the other side either. He's going through <laughs> rehab. You know. But uh, uh, who 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 did who did I just put on here? Who, who am I talking to? I, he hasn't even started his audio yet. Hello, hello, mm -hmm. are are you there? Can you hear me? Because if I can't hear you and you can't hear me, then I'm getting rid. Can you hear me? Okay. Well, I don't know. We'll have to get rid of him. Because he, he I, thought this was a Thanksgiving with his family. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, well, that's how I'm doing Thanksgiving. Well, Karen lives out in the uh, out in California. You li you're still living uh, down near. Um, I'm uh, in Ben Lomond. Ben Lomond, which is, it's kind of like the t the taint between uh, uh, the South Bay and uh, and and uh, what do we got? below you the big city um, so that's that smell <laughs> i was wondering man i go outside it's like what it smells like ass out here <laughs> oh, I, I told yeah, you yeah no it's it's in the mountains in the santa cruz mountains you know the hippie yeah mountains. yeah yeah and uh you've lived there god I, every uh, i think the last time i knew you or saw you I, i've known you for years but the last time i saw you was i think in that area wasn't it in ben Lowe? i don't know i don't know but i've been there since 1949 yeah <laughs> oh really wow, wow. <laughs> yeah uh it's and santa, santa cruz mountain area right Remember yeah that? exactly right yeah. yeah right right over this hill i'm in the Amadon valley oh okay yeah yeah, yeah that's that's brian cool. neary uh he's yeah i remember karen from uh, live 105 days oh, yeah. oh that was a while ago Mm -hmm. well, hello, Brian. Hi, how are you? Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, he was probably a young boy, Karen. 
<laughs> yeah, Thanks. I looks. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, and you're still a youngster compared to me, you know. Okay, well, where do you go? Like the Museum of Natural History? I mean, that no, that's where I'm. That's that's where I live. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I live there. Uh, they, they have me in the uh, right next to a Neanderthal, uh, you know. So, but you know, I, I I don't know what your format is for this show, but I I just feel this urge to tell you a, a really dreadful story about driving to your show once from Ben. Logan Go right ahead. The, yeah, the, do the, it. The, the yeah. theme of the show is anything we talk about. Okay, guys, <laughs> this is rough. So this is like 1992, mm -hmm. and uh, this is when we wore like these paisley spandex jumpsuit things <laughs> to Alex Bennett's show because there was a live audience. Yeah. And it's like, oh, dark hundred in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and I'm driving like a bat out of hell because I want to get there for the Alex Bennett show. You know, I want to get on there, and I, I got up at like, I don't know, midnight to put on makeup and hair and all this stuff, and I'm driving there, and it's icy cold. There's like black ice on the road, and all. So all of a sudden, I have to go to the bathroom, right? And I'm here, and I don't want to be late for Alex Bennett, but I have a jumpsuit on, but I got to hurry up. <laughs> so I run to this gas station, right? And I'm slipping on the black ice, and, and, uh, and, I, and I have an unfortunate accident in my rush <laughs> to remove my clothing uh i had this really bad gastric event and so <laughs> oh, it now was a I'm gastric event oh yeah oh that was, yeah. that was the worst kind yeah so now i'm standing in the chevron gas station ice cold teeth chattering <laughs> crying crying because I got to go to the Alex Bennett show. And, you know, if you don't show up to Alex Bennett, when's he going to have you on again? And I'm rinsing oh, out Oh, yeah, thing. like I'm I was going to kick you off the show if you didn't yeah. show up. I don't know. So, like, I'm in there and I'm rinsing out. I'm rinsing out my clothes, right? <laughs> Crying, 3.30 in the morning. And I get in the car and I'm sopping, flipping wet. <laughs> Driving to San Francisco with the car heater on and the steam is now coming off of the clothes <laughs> and the smell is coming up because like they don't have laundry soap in Chevron bathroom and, uh, and, and I'm still crying and shit. And so then I'm on Market Street and I find where to park and stuff and I'm and I'm trying to look all, yeah, I'm a comedian, don't have a care in the world and walk into live 105 and sit down. And I swear, Alex, people are looking at me like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was, I, yeah, I fooled no one. I fooled no one. You fooled me because I, I can't, I can't remember it. Yeah. I sat for three hours, like right across a table from you with like Yan from Yan Cag Cook or something reeking, <laughs> reeking like it smells outdoors of this house. Really? Like a taint, taint neighborhood. Yeah. I must've been doing a lot of Coke back then. Because I well, didn't smell anything. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure what it was. You had energy. Yeah, well, then that was the Coke. Okay. Yeah. How do you think I got up every morning and did a show for crying out loud? So it wasn't the coffee in yeah. the North Beach Cafe. It right. was, oh, all right. right. Okay. Right. I had a friend who, who had that same kind of incident happen to him, uh, but he was on a subway train. Going to your show? <laughs> well, he was coming to work at Sirius XM. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And, uh, yeah, and he uh, he uh, really had to go. And he couldn't find any place to go because in the subways do not have bathrooms. No. And even if they did, you wouldn't want to use them, right? right? <laughs> so he, uh, 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 he, uh, he, uh, he tried not to do anything, and he, he went over... And he pooped his pants. And as he was pooping, he just pulled them down and just took a dump on the subway, what do you call it? Platform. Uh, platform. Yeah, station, yeah. platform. Uh, and he then went to Sirius XM, and he knew where the executive's bathroom was and that it had a shower. <laughs> and he went up there and took a shower, and somehow, I don't know, he, he did what you did. He washed his clothes, and they were sopping wet, but... He then went was to he work. crying? Uh, he was not happy. <laughs> I mean, it, it, to us, when he told us the story, we were laughing hysterically. Oh yeah. But he didn't find any humor in the story, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, so try it in the subway sometime. That'd be good, you know. Actually, I've been on a subway when somebody was just going for it. 
<laughs> well, he was he was passed out on a bench, but it was it was totally happening, and it was dripping off, and it was going down, <laughs> and like the car moves, and then the the stream runs, and everybody's lifting their feet, but trying not to look at each other because it's the subway in New York. So you have to act like you're reading or really into your phone. Come on, you're talking about the romantic days of New York City. You know. Yeah, March. March. <laughs> you know, actually, the subways, they don't let poor people, they don't let the, un, uh, the, the people who want to sleep on the trains can't sleep in there anymore. That was a rich guy? Huh? <laughs> that was a rich guy pissing on himself on that bench? Probably. But the, wow. the homeless were starting to use the subways as places to stay overnight. And right. then, of course, COVID hit, and that is not exactly the most sanitary thing that can happen. So they chased them all out of the subways. Oh. And, of course, oh. they wound up in front of my apartment house and brought, it, brought, and brought their own couches with them. It was wonderful. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, they got them out of there, and then they went in, and they took every night from 1 to 5 in the morning they disinfect all the subway trains. And if you go on a subway train now, and I haven't been on one and I'm not taking a chance right now, they're supposedly the cleanest the subways have ever been in New York City. Just wow. incredible. Yeah. Marjorie took one once and she said it was it was just it was amazingly beautiful and clean. Oh, wow. And there was nobody in the car she was in. Mm. You know, and there still aren't because people are still staying away from the subways. Mm -hmm. Pizza Rat wasn't yeah. there. Pizza, no. Well, pizza there's rat. Pizza Rat. There's Pizza Rat, famous okay. Pizza Rat. Yeah, okay. and uh, uh, and then there, there's me. You know, so I mean, I'm, I'm. It, this this town it has lost its romance though, uh, when there isn't somebody there, pissing himself on the subway. You know, it just kind of yeah. takes away all the romance of the city. And you can't get off until it actually stops, so you just have to let the piss go down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you do? Did you go to another car? I didn't want to move, man. That oh. stuff was unpredictable. Every time the car moved, <laughs> the, the, the little stream would just go, I'm here. And then you kind of move, and it's like, no, I'm coming after you. You just sort of keep your feet up. and. Oh, you know. boy. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, Karen is amazing. She's a very funny lady and very talented. And she did comedy for the longest time. And then you kind of just stopped doing it. Mm -hmm. Why was that? Oh, a bunch of reasons. Um, I don't know if you remember, I had a child that was very sick. Uh -huh. Yeah, very yeah. sick. And I didn't so know about that. Yeah. it kind of kind of kicked the funnies butt for a while there. It just kicked it right out. And uh, I actually went from all that fame and glory of comedy competitions and radio and TV to cleaning bathrooms in a conference center. Wow. That's kind of awful. I didn't, I, I didn't know you had, do. had is it, is, did the kid uh, do okay, though, in the end? Yeah, she's 36. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, she, and she's a real nerd. So she, she lived to make your life miserable, is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah. But then I went to, on to teach high school, and I did that for yeah. A couple but you, but you you had a pretty good career going for you because you were mm -hmm. writing you were writing for Danny Thomas at one point. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Uh, you told me a story once. I don't know if you want to tell this story. Oh God, I know what this is. Okay, go you, ahead. You know the story. You know what? No, what go I'm ahead. Referring? You go ahead. You no, go ahead. you can go right ahead and tell it. You, no, I want to make sure. I want to make sure it's the story. Danny Thomas wanted to see you, so you went to his office. And, and, see, and there, and there was, it, and there, he wasn't, he wasn't there, and you sat on the couch. Yes. And all of a sudden, in front of you, you look, and there yes. is a glass coffee table. You went there. <laughs> huh? Is you that, went there. You that, just went there. Is that the story? You just went, you just went well, there. Well, now, you see, nobody gets, some people don't get the joke because they don't no. know the, let's say, myth about Danny Thomas. Okay, so children, Danny Thomas <laughs> liked to watch people go potty on glass tables. <laughs> now, was, was that just a rumor or the truth? I'm telling you that office at Witt Thomas had so many glass tables. <laughs> And I don't know if it was about making a joke about the legend, because mm -hmm. that's possible. That's possible. Or if it was just convenience, like you wouldn't have to change rooms. It was just anywhere you go, it could happen. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but it was was Thomas okay to work for? He was very interesting. 
Yeah. He always had a gun. What? Yeah. Oh. Make room for daddy. <laughs> <laughs> No, he had a gun. He wore a holster, always was packing. And he would never, you know, like when you're on the set, they buy extravagant lunches and stuff mm -hmm. that no one can eat because you're supposed to weigh three pounds when you're in show business. Right. So he would never, ever, ever eat any food that his wife did not prepare. And it would only be a bologna sandwich. And he would keep the sandwich on the inside of his jacket right near the gun. Not like, like who's going to club him over the head and take his bologna sandwich, I don't know. But that's where he kept his bologna sandwich. Was there, was there a reason why he, he was so into carrying a gun? Well, um, it, it could have been. I, there, are, there are rumors about why, why, you know, about who he associated with. Okay. Now, a lot been a of friend times. Of Trump. Huh? What? <laughs> A friend no, of but, Trump, yeah. President Trump, yes. No uh, idea. No, but but uh, uh, you know, comedians in those days worked with a lot of gangsters because that's who owned the clubs. You know. Ding 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 ding. Yeah. Well, yeah. the you know, and the other part of it too is you don't just randomly build St. Jude's if you're not guilty of something. <laughs> You're destroying my whole image of Danny Thomas. That's my job, Charles. <laughs> That's my job. I'm here to crush your world. Yeah, wait, wait till you hear the things she says about me, you know. But uh, I don't think you have any goods on me, do you? Maybe you do. No, but I'll never forget one time, I think it was 1980-something, early in the 80s. Mm hmm a bunch of us are sitting having breakfast mm -hmm. with the Alex Bennett in mm -hmm. North Beach. Yeah. And you were talking about a recent trip to Spain mm -hmm. and you called it, you informed us that it was called Ibiza. And then you proceeded to tell us the legend of the uh, member, the Royal King or whatever, who had a lisp right. and could not say, yeah. Right. So, right. yeah. And, and so you held court. Mm hmm in the mornings around breakfast. And I told great Ibiza stories, I see. You told great Ibiza, and everybody was on the edge of their seat. Yeah. Because it's like, Alex Bennett has a show <laughs> on Live 105. Is that the worst? Oh my God. Is that the worst story you can come up with about me? it that's it and we're like all sitting there and Stephen pearl comes in and his hair is all sideways and he's all ha, ha, and, and it's like i just ditched my car because i can't afford the parking tickets and it was wow oh yeah it was alex, a strange claim, time. alex claims he's poor now because he bought you guys lunch every day no he no, paid no. a lot of money to feed people that's <laughs> well true. i did i did but that would not not there not at that uh, uh, venue because oh, really? at, no, because at that venue, uh, I um, um, uh, was uh, uh, I had a deal with them, okay, and the deal was that uh, they, uh, they 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 paid a certain amount of uh, you know they they got plugs a lot on the show, oh. and then I could take people to have food there after the shows, so everybody got breakfast after the show, right, Karen? Why didn't I order? <laughs> Oh, why the hell did my order? I don't know. You should have. I was just like, I'm broke. So no, I just have a cup of coffee. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, I, you know, I just uh, thought I'd uh, bring that up. No, mm. you were super generous and you bought a lot of food for mm. a lot of people and it was nice. Yeah. And well, we were hungry. Well, I tried to. Super hungry. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, there's one other thing I want to tell people. And please stop me if you don't want to talk about it. Uh, your father was legend mm. in, in the world of animation, mm -hmm. and he was Art Babbitt, who was one. Was he considered one of the nine old men or whatever of Disney? No, because he was Jewish. <laughs> okay, so he was one. Of so it was like nine old men in that Hebe, kind of. <laughs> but he, but seriously, there are other people who call him the tenth old man, and yeah. he he was made a Disney legend posthumously, and there's a plaque of him 
for him uh, in the Disney Studio Quad. Oh, really? Great. Yeah. Because and in the Presidio, there's a display of him leading the strike against Disney. Mm-hmm. He led the strike, Disney Museum. He led the strike against mm-hmm. Disney, and yeah. he and Disney, uh, Disney, I don't think talked to him after that. He still right. worked for a while at the studio. Well, the agreement is that he would be rehired. That was part of the terms. Mm-hmm. But what Disney would do is give him very complicated scenes to animate. And then slowly rip them in front of his face. Oh, wow. Nice guy. Yeah, really nice guy. Now, here's the thing. Uh, the uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. Two of the things that people have seen all their lives if they watch Disney cartoons, the the, the mean witch, or rather the queen Snow White. in Snow White, the, the queen, queen who turns into the witch, mm-hmm. he did the queen. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And then... He did the dancing toadstools oh. in Fantasia. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to show it to you. I have it. You uh, have what? what? Oh. Hop low. One of the one of the mushrooms is on my arm. Oh really? Oh. <laughs> yeah, and that was a really scary thing to do because I was so afraid it would look like they'd be like, Karen, why do you have a little penis on your arm? But it's actually <laughs> there. Yeah. Oh wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, but what a legacy. So did well, you... both of my parents have Wikipedia pages. How's that for pressure? <laughs> uh, let, let's see. Your mother has a Wikipedia page because of what? It's a little story. <laughs> Everything's a little story with you. She, she was Mengele's artist. Oh, God. Mengele? Really? Jeez. Because I had a friend. Who was a movie director? Who was Mengele? Who was Mengele? No, who was in the in in the in, in at Auschwitz? Oh, really? And met Mengele. Yeah. Yeah, Mengele. It's a small world after, after all. all. So you and I have six degrees, nine degree, five degrees, whatever's of separation now. Six, yeah, totally. Yeah. So there she was she was Mengele's artist. Wow. Yeah, look her up, Dina Babbitt. Yeah, well, what what did she draw for uh, for? Uh, uh... Let's see, drawing for Mangala, bowls of fruit, no. <laughs> bouquets of flowers, no. <laughs> Tortured Jews and gypsies. <laughs> oh man! Oh, which that's... was a great parenting class. I it imagine. prepared her for children. I imagine. Yeah. yeah, and uh, uh, didn't your father marry his first wife? Was uh, was the model for Snow White? So his first wife was Mar- he abandoned. Oh really? He oh, was okay. he was forced into an Orthodox Jewish wedding in Omaha, Nebraska, and he left. He was 16 years old and took off to become a cartoonist for newspapers papers in New York. And then his second wife, once he got out to Disney Studios, was Marge Champion. Yeah. Who just passed away. Yes. But she was the model for Snow White. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then, then he married your mother, right? Yeah. And then that then came you. And lucky us, here you are. Ah, yes. Yes. Here uh, I are. Yeah. Now, this is our, our citizen panel. These are people who call Hi. the program and they, 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 they you know talk about stuff you know uh, usually lately we've been talking a lot about the political nature of things oh hello there he is there's john larkin we were worrying about you john are you okay yeah. hey here i am uh, this is our our citizen panel these are oh, people uh, you, uh, you got you got to t- turn down your audio yeah yeah okay yeah so are hey. you are you okay yeah, I was in the hospital. I had uh, pneumonia. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Yeah, that really? first show with that fucking shingles led to everything. Yeah. R- really? Yeah. God. Well, I'm going to get better now. By the way, Karen, welcome to Alex's uh, uh, waiting room. Uh, Thank you. The doctor will see you soon. Take uh, a number. Yeah. I mean, uh, everybody here has got something wrong with them. Yep. And, yep. and if they don't, they will soon. So, yes. you know, I mean. You're doomed. Yeah. Good. But anyway, I, I, you know, I, I just hate the fact that you got out of comedy because I consider you one of the funniest people I knew. You know, oh, you are well, genuine. Thank you. You are a genuine talent. 
Yeah. Well, there's a there was a ceiling back then. Yes. That you, you know women couldn't go. That you could only go so far. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. No, it was uh, you were wonderful. You were terrific. Thank I, you. I, I thank whenever you. I ever saw that you were coming to be on the show, I went good. It's going to be a good show. You know. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, you should meet the rest of the people. Charlie Wallace lives in uh, in Texas, and uh, Jeffrey, hi, Charlie. Jeffrey Stein is up in uh, uh, Connecticut, who is currently the state that's giving us COVID. Uh, and uh, Josh Wheeler is in Ohio. And, oh, uh, hi, Josh. and Brian Neary is down near you, believe it or Brian. not. Just, just over the hill. As is uh, Kevin, <coughs> who is Kevin, what's the city you're in again? Which one is it? Huh? Hollister. Hollister. Uh, okay. Yeah, and, and Tony is from Queens, New York. And what you see behind him is the most hideous, just move your head out of the way so the like the most hideous wallpaper I've ever seen in my life, along with terrible curtains. Yeah. Yeah. And he takes care of his mother. That's his, oh, his no, mother. don't feel sorry for him. him. Don't feel oh. sorry for him, Karen. <laughs> Tony is appreciating him. How much how much a year are you getting paid to take care of your mother, uh, Tony? I get twenty an hour, but I also get overtime, but it helps me sell my comic books too. So yeah, well, how many hours a day do you work, Tony? Um, I usually work seven hours. Well, if you can call it work, I feel so embarrassed to say work. <laughs> do you get I, holiday pay for tomorrow? Yeah, I, I I get time and a half tomorrow. Can you believe this? Just for being around the <laughs> house. You can get up Go time for it. Home cutting a turkey. Yeah. So Alex, the, look what you made me do. We had to set the table already the night before for my sister. Come on, look at the tablecloth. The table. Oh, it oh goes God. So well with the wallpaper. Wait a minute. Yeah, I mean, the wallpaper's bad enough, but that tablecloth. She's got flowers. It looks like it's from the 60s here. Yeah. I'm telling you, my mother saved everything. Yeah. yeah. Nothing, I, nothing saw the garbage can. I often wondered why. I don't know. Uh, you, I was gonna you had no taste at all, and now I know. Oh, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, I get it from yeah. my mother, really. <laughs> He's right. Every, everything you've said, you've pretty much been dead on, I told you. Yeah. He's like right on the target. On Karen, Tony is a big uh, comics fan. So oh, he yeah. collects oh. comics and he sells them. And he makes a fortune yep. do selling them. comic <laughs> books. Yeah. So um, you seen Magneto, the Marvel comic Magneto? Oh, uh, which one? The new? Uh, I haven't read anything new with him, but I... No, 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 the old Magneto. Oh, the old Magneto. The one from, let's see, I want to say 2008. There was a, they did my mom's story in the back of one of. There was a Holocaust issue of Magneto, and um, yeah. Oh, I like her. Yeah, I haven't. I've been reading a couple others. There's so much stuff I want to read that I got to get to. Yeah. But I'm a big X Men fan. To tell you the truth, I have. I was like, that's one of my first things I collected as a kid from the 70s. Was like. Mm -hmm. uh, the X Men and well, basically Spider Man and Batman really. I'm fanatical with that, like, and I also like yeah. art too, though. Yeah, like America. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. And uh, yeah. you you weren't here earlier, but uh, you know Karen Karen's father was an animator at Disney Studios. Yeah, I was listening yeah. to it. I was it was fascinating. Yeah, yeah. it is fascinating. But he's uh, dead now. So everybody, everybody, uh, uh, I hate to ask this question. This is a terrible question to ask, but how do you think things are going for the Biden administration so far? Well, that was an answer, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, okay. uh, the president is finally looks like he's trying to get out of the way. So, you know, and uh, hey, you know, he could, you know, Biden could use a comedy writer. <laughs> Just think about that, Karen. He could use a comedy. Right? Well, I'm thinking about how he pardoned a turkey. Trump pardoned oh, a turkey. Yes, yes. And, and, then, Michael and then Michael Flynn. And then Michael Flynn. I, well, I like but to first say, the oh, turkey. No, no, no but, here, but the joke there is he pardoned a turkey. Uh, 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 and then, uh, and then the, the actual bird was pardoned. Yeah, I see. Right, or something like that, yeah. I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Biden needs a joke writer. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he, he lacks a little sense of humor. I mean, you know who's got a great sense of humor is Obama. Yeah. He, and he has timing, too. That's the great part about it. I'm going, this guy's a natural. 
you know. Yeah. And when he's being interviewed by comedians, he seems to love it because he just launches right into it, you know. Mm. And he's, he's got funny. He's got the whole thing down, you know. I'm terrified of my wife and my child, you know, things like that. And I love it. I just love it. He seems I'd be afraid. Hmm? I'm sorry. What What were you saying? Well, I'd be afraid to see Biden burst into laughter because I'm. It's like I just don't want him to have a heart attack. <laughs> oh God. I, I don't want to see him get too excited or emotional or. Yeah, you, you want know, him like, to just... ha, 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 poof. Yeah. He's in great shape. You see him jogging up on the stage. He, he, no, he, he also well, I think he jogs up on the stage, but that's the most strength he's got for the day. You know, he does <laughs> that to say, "See, look at me. I can, jo-, you know." But he yeah. also rides a bike. He rides a bike yeah, a lot. riding a bike in Delaware. Yeah, he's in, great, he's in great shape. Oh. He, he, he's Alex, you know what he should do? Fake a heart attack, like grab his chest when he runs off. Just see what everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, this is the big one. I'm just joking. That was for Trump. Who was it? Oh, <laughs> He's got to wait till after January 20th. You know, he told me a yeah. great story. Grace Slick, when she, she had a big drug problem, if you may remember, back in the day. And she told me that she finally, she quit all drugs, right? But she would get up on stage and stumble on stage and kind of act like she was high and everybody would start cheering like they wanted her to be high. Mm -hmm. And then she had to say, sorry, fooled you. You know, and then they all got disappointed. They wanted to see the high Grace Slick. Now, how difficult is it to quit drugs with that kind of reputation, you know? Yeah. That's why Jerry Garcia is dead. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All these audiences are like enablers, you know, and they get they, they get people to, to, to keep up with their bad habits. And if they try to stop, there are a bunch of people there going, eh, don't do it. So yeah. anyway, how are you feeling, John Larkin? You feeling better? Yeah. Yeah. You got yeah, pneumonia I... from the shingles? Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You know, wait. My immune system just crashed and uh that's what i got but um you know i'm getting it up you getting my breath better none of this had that. to do with covid or anything that's all you got. It didn't have anything to do with covid right no they did a covid test when i was in the hospital and it was negative so that was good yeah they had me on uh uh iv you know with antibodies and they did a blood infusion um mm-hmm. With potassium mm-hmm. but um, i'm feeling a lot better i'm good now yeah okay good because somebody mentioned last night we haven't heard from john like larkin yeah. in a few days <laughs> and i uh, i suddenly realized no you hadn't called and yeah. i wondered if if maybe you were having problems but now that you're yeah, here tonight my friend and then also also alex what you said too my friend also had shingles in the back of the head where it was coming to his eye and they said the same thing that he could be blind, i got so i got around my blind. eye once well you know <laughs> The thing with mine is there's really no blisters or anything. But yeah. It just itches and stings like a motherfucker, yeah. and it don't go away. Yeah, you know? it's weird. Yeah. Well, I uh, uh, all I know is I and I've said this before that when I first heard that I had shingles, I thought it was something that should affect your ass. It just yeah, sounds yeah. like something <laughs> that should affect your ass. You know. Oh, I've got this horrible itch. What is it? Shingles. You know, I mean, but no, it's it's uh, it. You get it because you had uh, uh, chicken pox as a kid, and I yeah. never had chicken pox, or so I thought. But then I had a girlfriend who, at twenty three, came down with chicken pox, and I didn't get it, and I didn't get it, and finally, when I got shingles, the doctor told me you probably had it as a kid and you didn't know it. You had like a, a small case of it. How do you not know that you're covered in pustules? Well, well that, that, that's the way I look most of the time. So, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I was well, not. Well, then that's understandable. Uh, no, <laughs> are chicken pox pustules? I yeah, just wanted anymore. to say pustules so badly. Oh, okay. I just really. <laughs> you were, just... For, for all, all her life, and, and, and it's uh, getting extensive now, she has tried to work the word pustules okay. into a conversation. And tonight yes. on this program, she managed to. Yeah. It's just one Bucket of Bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I should, I should, be, chicken pox I should so be paying bad. you for all this free comedy tonight. You know. uh, 
But I I'm never, just doing it for attention. I never paid you for the radio show, so why should I pay you for this? You know. What? What? Well, that's true. Yeah, I never did. Why, you want some money now, re retroactively? No, I'm fabulously oh, wealthy. You. I'm in Ben Lomond. <laughs> Ben Lomond. That makes it much. And you still have a house. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. True. Uh, how 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 in in your area? Because California is really in bad shape right now with uh, COVID. How is it affecting like Ben Lomond? Is it? Do you feel pretty safe there? How would I know? I don't go outside. Oh, okay. Well, and that, that answers that question. Yeah. Yep. No, I don't feel safe anywhere at all. I'm a hypochondriac. Oh, me me, me too. And uh oh, it's contagious. What? No, we 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 could. This could be critical mass here if we ever start yeah. going with this. Really? Is yeah. every everybody here? Do you are you, oh, no, you no, usually? No, no, no. Do, do, no, you, no. Are, do you use does this look infected to you a lot? Is there no, a time I to just... take your temperature, Alex? Isn't it time to take your temperature? Oh yeah. Wait a <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, he wait does it two or three times a show. Yeah. Dear God, please let it be oral. Please let it be oral. No, no, no that that comes about. Now, here you go. Here we go. Bend over. And... Oh, there we go. Okay. He makes us take a COVID test. That's how worried he is. Ninety-eight point two. What? It's no usually not that high. Oh no. Ninety-eight point three. Oh shit! Don't start that. Uh oh. That's it. Go home. Ninety-eight point three again. Oh wow. Have a cup of tea. Mm. Could be because I'm in mean, Alex. Yeah. Do, you, do you have if batteries for that? If it goes 98.3, yeah, yeah. have batteries. Oh, I, I have batteries for it. Yeah. Good. You use it so much. Remember, you got to use it tomorrow. So. Yeah, I have people coming over, and we're gonna do. It. Let me see here. Here's my. You're camera. having company come for Thanksgiving. Well, there are people. We're all I'm, flying there. They're all, <laughs> from come South on Dakota. with us. From South Pick Dakota. Up on the way to the airport. Didn't you listen to Cuomo this morning? Mm -hmm. He's he's mm -hmm. like your uncle Joe. Just because he's your uncle Joe doesn't mean he's in your household. Isn't he the best? He's the only person I can listen to anymore. Yeah, he's wonderful. He's right? wonderful because he he just he's so self pejorative too about himself. But he said that uh, yeah he 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 gives he gives a great speech and he doesn't. I, what I felt is that in this whole thing, he's the one reliable source you can get. He's not going to lie to you. Tell it. You know, he's not going to sugarcoat it. But on the other hand, he's going to tell you what you can do to help solve it. You know, yeah. and he gives a good pep talk. And and on top of that, he's got that whole Queens, New York thing, you know. Right. Tony's the closest thing we have to Mario Cuomo on this show. And that's that's saying something terrible about this show. <laughs> you know, so. uh, Josh, how's it going out there in Ohio? Huh? Slowly on the uptick, I think. So, you sound excited so, about that. Pretty similar. Are they? Are yeah. you? Are, is can't change it. Is it? Is it still terrible? The whole COVID thing where you are? Yeah, yeah it's pretty bad. I think it's one of the worst places in the nation right now. Yeah. They've got uh, they got a couple counties all around where I live that are in that like purple level or whatever you know that extra extra you know even extra high level of cases or whatever so it's been yeah. pretty bad yeah yeah well I mean uh, uh, I I'm having two people over for for uh, Thanksgiving I'm having no don't do that don't do that shame shame <laughs> thing. Yeah. These are people we know are clean, okay? That's what they all said. One is my friend oh, Shecky, who oh. Shecky? Shecky, Shecky, and he's not a comedian either. Wow. He used to be the film coordinator for the David Letterman show, and the, and okay. Letterman gave him the name Shecky because his last name is Sheckman. And he never called yeah. himself Shecky until then, and now all he ever is called by anybody is Shecky. And Makes I sense. feel that if you're in comedy, as you were, as I, I peripherally was, if you don't know somebody named Shecky, then you're not in comedy. Okay? So anyway, he uh, he never goes out. And when he does, he wears a mask. 
<laughs> okay, I know his. And then the other one is our friend uh, Natalia, whose husband last year died. It was uh, Jack Garfine, who was in a concentration camp. I told you about somebody I knew who was in a concentration camp. And um, she never goes out. Never goes to, oh. through this whole thing. All she's gone out for occasionally is to go to the store to buy groceries, oh, that's and that's it. So, you know, we're, we've got a pretty clean bunch coming over. That's good. You know. Tables, yeah. receivables, uh, 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 Kevin, put yourself on mute if you're, uh, if you're going to be talking. I'm sorry. You. Okay. That's okay. That's all right. No big deal. Uh, anyway, so uh, um, so I have we have two people coming over. You know, and then we have a big dining room table, so there's enough space to give us safe distance, and we have windows will open, and we're going to do the whole thing. And we're, you know, but we're, uh, uh, th these are a bunch of mask wearers. These aren't people who've gone loose with this thing. But yesterday, I took my life in my hands, folks. I get off out of the, out of the taxi, all right, because I had to go to my dentist, and uh, I uh, get out. And there's a guy at the bus stop in front of my building with his mask being used as a chin strap. And he says to me, have you got a dollar? And I was just, I was irritated enough because of some problems that I had with car, with a car service. And I just looked at him and I said, no, wear a fucking mask. And he started yelling at me, but I just walked right into my apartment. But should have gone like this huh? and handed it to him. I just, it, it, <laughs> it pisses me off that people just, you know, oh, oh, I don't have to wear a mask. No, I don't need to. What do you mean? Have you seen? There are now 41 people dead every day in New York City where there used to be none a few months ago. All right? Don't you know wear the goddamn mask? Uh, I just don't understand people. You know, and I don't care if they're bums on the street. You know, they should, there should be people going around saying, here, here's a mask, wear the mask, you know. But uh, it, it's horrible. It's just horrible, you know. And uh, I walk down the street, I feel like I'm walking a gauntlet, you know, with people hacking and coughing and sneezing, and I'm wearing my mask, and I get my hand over the mask as double protection, mm -hmm. you know. So anyway, so I'm very sure about this, I, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I hope I can keep from getting COVID until I can finally get the vaccination. That's what we're all going for, right? Yeah, yeah. we're just waiting until the vaccination comes along. And then, Did anybody here have it yet? No, we won't. Nobody, they, they say, I think it's like, is it December 10th or something? They're supposed to give it the, uh, the go ahead, I believe. And one day wow. after that, they're going to have it shipped out and sticking needles in people's arms. You know, they're going to start with the health care workers and the first responders, you know, and people like that. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to do the seniors in, uh, in uh, assisted living facilities. Oop. But, you know, you're not in an assisted <laughs> living facility, Jeff. I'm number three, then. You're, you're, we're, we're number three. We're in the number three group, which are old farts. I think it's listed like that on the thing. Old farts. Tony's the caregiver. Does Tony get it quick? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, maybe. I probably. I, probably yeah. I might. I might. I oh, like, good. I might get one too. Yeah. Why? Yeah. How are you a caregiver? Oh, your mother. You're I certified myself to see to work to help my mom. Oh, great. Right, so my luck. I'll get the shot, the vaccine. My mother yeah. won't, and I'll have a reverse effect. We'll get in line we together. Watch you. Then we can see if it works or not. If you start getting some yeah. nervous tick. Yeah. Well, I told Marjorie, is this cruel? I told Marjorie, I said, well, we're kind of lucky because they're going to give it to old people in healthcare facilities first. So if they don't die, then it's safe for us to oh. take. It. Yeah, guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah, they're That's guinea nice. pigs. And all those healthcare workers, real guinea pigs. But suppose Canary's it, in coal mines. Suppose it doesn't work. We don't have anybody to work in hospitals. Yeah, there you go. Oh yeah. God. I don't know. I'm 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 hoping You are a hypochondriac's best friend. Oh. Thank you for introducing all these terrifying thoughts. Well, I, I I it's my pleasure to do it. You know. I mean, I every time during the you can, well, I you're you're uh, you're a uh, hypochondriac, right? So I think so. So over the last how many months has it been now? Nine months? 
Ten months? Uh, People keep months. saying more than it is, so it sounds more dramatic. But, nine I, months. I, but anyway, since since February, I've not gone, really gone out to any appreciable extent except for essential things, all right? right. Uh, like going to movies. Uh, and uh, no, I, I you haven't gone out. But, uh, you know, I feel I've been dodging this thing, you know, and the hypochondriac in me, man, just, you know, I, I like, uh, come home, not only wash my hands, I autoclave them, you know? I mean, it's just, it's terrible. And I was never, we, we've become a nation of, uh, what's the term, uh, where people are always washing their hands and... Uh, OCD. OCD. We, we're a nation yeah. of people now who have OCD. We're all wearing masks. You know, if we had been wearing masks all along, do you know you wouldn't have been getting colds during the winter? Wow. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, but we wash our hands and we, you know, we stay away from people. We're, we've all become Howie Mandel. True. He must be really comfortable for the first time. Oh, he said, I saw him in an interview. He said, I told you so. <laughs> Yeah. Do you ever do that thing now where you're watching a TV show and you see people get close and you have this for a moment and you're like, oh, no, you're too close. And it's like a TV show. It's like a sitcom. Do you have that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, what happens is I watch things on TV that were shot a couple of years ago where people yeah. are hanging around each other and I feel uncomfortable. You know, because this has really become the, the incredible new normal. Uh, yeah, I actually turned down a film, uh, a short film that I was supposed to do the first week in December because I just, as the numbers were going up and up and up, and they were making all these accommodations, you know, the way they do now. Mm -hmm. They, You have to take a COVID test, I think, three days before the shoot, mm -hmm. and then you have to promise you'll lock down for four days, I think. Yeah. And then you go on set, and everyone has a mask, and you have to answer a series of questions, and then there's only a limited time that you're allowed to film. And I got more and more and more freaked out. And they even changed the location from being an indoor shot to an outdoor shot. And I was still too freaked out to do it. Wow. Wow. They, they, yeah, they do a lot of, of pre-screening and stuff. Like, we have four questions to ask you. Why is this night different than all other nights? Right. Uh, why on this night do we relax rather than, yeah. Yeah. So it's a very Jewish joke. Nobody here got it. Except I totally for, got you. Except, I was with you yeah, all it, the way. Yeah. Except for Jeffrey. Jeffrey knew what I was talking about. Jeffrey knows. <clears throat> yeah. Um, uh, John Larkin, have we talked to you since uh, Biden got the, got the, got won the uh, presidency? No, I don't think so. Really? It's been that long? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, because I wanted to get your take on it, then. you know. Well, I was happy as hell, and uh, I thought it was fucking hilarious. I, I, I knew, I knew Trump was going to act like this. Exactly, we all did. Yeah. You know, so that's. Isn't they cute? It's the great. little little baby Trump, the little yeah. baby Trump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's great. I would have liked to have got the uh, a bigger margin in the house and. Uh, uh the senate but we'll see yeah but you can't have everything at least we got rid of him at least yeah. we don't got to listen to that fucker's voice ever again i was you time. know i i'm so exhausted from the last four years that if i never yeah. hear his name again it'll be too soon so you don't think he's gonna run in the next election i don't think he's gonna be alive by the next yeah, election yeah. okay come really? on really come yeah. on oh he's yeah gonna... he he's very He's very careful about his diet and his personal habits. He's really, he's, you know, he, 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 I think is one bucket of chicken away from a heart attack. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, when he had COVID, I thought he was going to get it. That's why I don't think he, Charlie said he didn't have COVID. Yeah. All right. And, and, and I'm beginning to believe maybe Charlie was right. Yeah. I'm on team Charlie. Mm -hmm. I mean, he got over it too soon, even with all the medicine they gave him. You know, he was in, he was out. And then he was out campaigning. Now, people who've had COVID, at the very least, have at least six months of one problem or another because it, it has a residual effect and so on. 
and uh, he he didn't have any of those problems. So I I'm I'm with Charlie on that one. You know. Alex, Alex, Yahoo News picked up your your piece about the the fine the fine print. About seventy five percent of every donation to Trump's election defense fund could be spent on President himself yeah. on things. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Even Yahoo News is talking about that now. Well, it's his new job. Yeah. You know. And that's why he's doing that. Yeah. He's dragging everything out. Yeah. I mean, he he's always he's always sold his name, and he's selling it now to a bunch of Yahoos out there who think that this election was stolen. You know. I mean, um, let's say we did steal it. We just simply stole it back from somebody who stole it. So you know. It's like I feel kind of like O.J. Simpson, you know. I, yeah, I, that's my stuff. I just want my stuff back, you know. So anyway, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's just I'm tired of it, you know. And I was thinking, I was watching MS. I heard MSNBC yesterday on the air in the other room, and I went, "Okay, it's time for them to stop." You know, enough with this already. You know, it's, it's, we won. There's nothing to talk about. At oh, least for now, the they're time grind, now they're grinding uh, the Flynn thing into the ground. Yeah, yeah. Between yeah. CNN and MSNBC, they're grinding this Flynn thing. Into yeah, the like they didn't expect that he was like, going to pardon. On. They didn't expect he was going to pardon Flynn. This right? shit's going to go on for another month and a half. It's like, right, exactly. It, they, there's more to come. Yeah, but I mean, they just keep, they keep ginning it up and ginning it up and ginning it up. And they, in a way, they got him elected in the first place by giving him a whole bunch of free publicity. So, yeah. Well, I think it's hysterical that there's, first time in history, there's a president attempting to pardon himself. Yeah. yeah. Well, the only way, he, I think he, no, no. <laughs> he, can't, he can't pardon himself, so there's a thinking that a few days before his term is over with, he's going to resign so that Pence can become president and pardon him. <gasps> I never even thought of that. Yes. He, he's a puppet. He'll do it. Oh, he'll do it. Yeah. He'll do it. He want you know the only reason he's panicking now and trying to call everything fake and that he he really won. He, today he he said something where he said, "I won by an astounding margin." What? Don't you read the newspapers? <laughs> you know, don't you see No. <laughs> no. He, he doesn't read you know, there were there were. I'm sorry, there was there was five, six million more people than you than yours that didn't like you. That means you don't get elected, okay? And last time there were three million, but it didn't work. I don't know why. We don't know how we became president, but somehow we became president. But anyway, uh, I wonder how long it's going to take for Melania to divorce him. Uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, I'm saying January 21st. You think right away? <laughs> oh, I think, it... I think she's going to be out of there so fast your head will spin because she didn't want to go to the White House, and the way he got her to go to the White House was to rewrite the, nup the prenups. Okay? So she's got a good exit oh. strategy if she needs it, I'm sure. And I, oh, Valentine's Day. Listen, she's a young woman. She still can get somebody who's attractive, you know? So anyway, it's just amazing. Just amazing. Hey, listen, I want to thank you, Karen, for calling tonight. Oops, because it's been wonderful. You're terrific. And would you Thanks. would you call again, please, now that you sure. know how to do it and where we are and what we do here? And it's still sure. early. Thanks where for you... having me. Yeah, but please do it. I loved having you here. Thanks for having me. Charlie, love having you here. And Jeff, yeah. thank you. And thank you to Josh. And uh, am I going to see you on um, Saturday at all? We do our little Saturday call together talk to some uh, to good night. a couple other people and l let me say goodbye to brian neary and to uh, uh, uh let's just count again <laughs> 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 kevin and josh and 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 it's good to have you back john larkin we uh, we wondered where you were and uh, we now we know it's all okay anyway everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll be, ah. give a big wave goodbye as well. There they go, ladies and gentlemen, our citizen panel for tonight. I want to thank them all. And I also want to thank uh, 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 our good friend Will Durst for having joined us as well uh, this evening. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we'll, uh, we'll do it again uh, very, very soon. 
anyway, that's it. Um, that's about where we leave off. Okay. Uh, next is uh, Jack Bishop. He'll be here. And uh, he's got a nice show called The Intersection. He'll be using uh, Skype. And you can call it a GabNet Live. And then also, uh, don't forget that uh, to, uh, I'll be back again here. Let's see here. We won't be on tomorrow night. We won't be back again on Friday. But we'll be back again next Tuesday. Okay. Uh, next Tuesday. Right here. We'll be right here. Right here. Right here. In this very place. Uh, at uh, 1030. Same time, same station in life. Uh, and by the way, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And more than that, be safe out there and wear a mask and have a safe Thanksgiving. Bye, everybody. <laughs>